Hi guys, today I will be reading the B550 Vision D, the ATX Super from Gigabyte, designed for Ryzen 3000 series and upcoming 4000 series. Yay! Now let me guide you with the both features and also the benchmark performance. For RAM support, right out of the box, it can support up to 128GB capacity combined on the 4 RAM slots at 5200MHz using the XMP profile with 3000 series Ryzen processors. ECC RAM is also supported, you can check the QB LEDs, but pretty much all ECC can work. Here we can see the debug LED display. Looking at the PCIe ring, there are two PCIe 4.0 rings running at x16 and x8 speed based on the processor, and one PCIe 3.0 ring running at x4 speed based on the chipset. For storage, it has two NVMe slots. The top supports PCIe 4.0, x4, and x2 SSD based on the processor. The bottom supports PCIe 3.0. X4 and X2 SSD based on the chipset. There are heatsink and single-sided thermal pad for each NVMe slots for heat management. For support, there are four of them separated to two sides. The support supports RAID configuration as well. Looking at the headers on the board, there are eight fan headers, one near the dual CPU 8 plus 4 pin sockets, two top right side, three below the 24 pin board socket on the right side, two more on the bottom of the board. There are five RGB headers. A pair of 5 volt addressable RGB and 12 volt RGB is located on the top right and bottom left, and a single 4 pin 12 volt under the CPU area. There are 3 USB headers, 1 USB 3.2 Gen 1 and 2 USB 2.0 header. For IO Shield, it's pre installed, and first time I see a white one. There is PS2 and 2 USB 2.0 for your mouse and keyboard. For display, it has DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 for wireless connectivity, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 2 2 Type-A and 2 Type-C. The Type-C supports Titan Beach, 2 1 Gigabit Ethernet ports. For audio, it has typical 5 audio port with an optical out. For performance, we will be using Ryzen 7 3800X. The board has 14-phase VRM setup, not sure if it's direct phase or doubles. BIOS have limited features for overclocking since this workstation board is designed for stability, but at least they provide the option to adjust two power load line for overclocking. To speed up the process of overclocking, we are using the Ryzen Master. You still can copy the value into the BIOS method way after you get the stable overclock settings. We manage the overclock easily to 4.3 GHz and 1.2 W. Here we got Cinebench R15, R20, and Adobe Premiere 4K rendering stable. Using the IDA64 stress test, we managed to get an average of 76 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius max with ambient temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius. At 4 GHz, we managed to use 1.025 watts, Cinebench R15, R20, and Adobe Premiere 4K rendering stable. Using IDA64, temperatures are manageable at 59 degrees Celsius average and peak of 65 degrees Celsius. As you can see, the board is capable to overclock easily despite less BIOS overclocking adjustment. Thankfully, Gigabyte added the load line calibration or overclocking will be tricky. If you are interested with this board, links in the description below. Thanks for watching our video. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And see you guys in the next review.